Hi everybody, um, welcome, thank you for tuning in. This is Brian from Witch Doctor, and we're continuing the bullet runout test. Um, our first test looked at uh, bullet runout in a scenario where we uh, were jamming the bullets uh, into the lands. Um, basically, uh, you know, we established a touch point to where the bullet would be on the lands and then we seeded it the bullet further into the lands and you know there's some speculation that doing that you know is going to sort of recenter the bullet so if the bullet is you know not really centered that well and has a lot of run out um, that uh, putting them into the lands is going to recenter it so went ahead and uh, decided okay well let's let's do another test where we are going to actually find a good off lands load um, and do the same test off the lands. And so I went ahead and did some load development. If you, I just published a video prior to this one about what how I did the load development, but uh, I'll kind of quickly brush over it again. Um, we use the same rifle with the Nouveau Action, Brux Barrel, um, Brass Powder, Primers, etc., all the same same bullet and we just started pulling it off the lands a little bit and seeing you know how is precision doing it um, and the thousands off the lands bad precision uh, four thousandths off a eh, little bit better but still not great seven thousandths off getting better ten thousandths off okay looks like it's kind of doing a clover leaf thing and then eleven thousandths off um, shot really well um, anyway so what I do know about this bullet is, yeah, around 10 to 12 thousandths off seems to be the optimal um, sort of depth there for, for this particular bullet. Also on lands about 4 thousandths is good. So you might find some bullets can shoot on and, you know, into and off lands pretty well. This is one of the bullets that does. Um, anyway, so went ahead and proceeded loading several rounds, shooting a bunch of five shot groups. Um, with, you know, this particular 28.8 uh, was the charge of N133 and um, just shot, you know, the 11 thousandths off with, you know, very minimal run out bullets that pretty much came out of the seating die with minimal run out. And then um, having to sort of create the run out, like I mentioned before, using this Hornady tool, you can create run out by throwing a bullet in there. Um, you know, looks like there's about less than a thousandths run out in this bullet. And then you can use this little tool here where you can actually create run out. So you kind of turn it and create a little run out. And well, that didn't create a whole lot. Got to turn it in a little bit more. Uh, oh, well, look at that turn, like basically eliminated all run out. Um, this one's going to create a lot of run out because I just gave it a good tug. Um, this looks like 5, 10, 11 thousandths, 12 thousandths run out, which is too much. I, I would normally then sort of recenter the bullet to get about 6 thousandths run out. So anyway, because uh, I figured 6 thousandths is probably the maximum that your, your tooling, you know, uh, is going to get. So I compared, you know, minimal to no run out to 6 thousandths run out. And so here were the first two five shot groups for none, first two five shot group for 6 thousandths run outs. Um, notice not a hell of a lot of a difference. I mean, we got kind of like a circular one here and there, and then we got some with some, you know, um, you know, vertical dispersion on these two. Anyway, went out and loaded a bunch more, shot some more five shot groups, and um, basically compared the two. And here we have the uh, minimal run out five shot groups, and then here we have the six thousandths run out five shot groups. And you can see, you know, there's some similarities in the group shape, you know, um, some, you know, vertical there, a little bit of horizontal there, circular, a little bit of horizontal, a little bit of vert. Um, not a super huge amount. Well, that one's kind of big. <laughs> but anyway, very similar in terms of group shapes, not really showing a huge difference in um you know, group shape, and, and then we looked at group size, and I'll go ahead and get the data for that here in a second. 
Okay, so, you know, bullet shape looked very similar. Didn't see any striking major differences. And um, group size, uh, in the minimal runout situation, group size was 0.2722 in terms of the aggregate for the six five-shot groups that were fired. And for six thousandths run out, the group aggregate was 0.2533. And when you run the statistical test to see, you know, is there seeming to be any meaningful difference between the two, um, the probability value says no. That there doesn't seem to be any sort of major differences or any statistically significant difference between the minimal run out and the high level run out. Okay, so um, now you might be thinking like, man, that's, you know, maybe I've done my own test where <laughs> too much run out, you know, seemed to have messed with precision or whatnot. Um, but in this case, it didn't either even on the into the lands and off the lands. Now, here's why I think that's the case. And I know I've mentioned this in the previous video, but I'll just go over it again briefly here. Um, if this is the first video you're seeing on this is the um, the chamber dimensions in this particular barrel um, with the particular reamer that I use um, if you look at the chamber dimensions on there you will see that this portion here called the free bore the diameter of the free bore is what we would call a tight free bore. And so the bullet itself, you know, at, at um, uh, what we call the, the area that sort of connects with the land and as it's going down the, the barrel is using that um, space on the bullet to sort of twist the bullet, okay? That space um, on the bullet goes into the free bore, okay? Now, if your bullet size is 0.243, which this bullet is, and your freeboard diameter is 0.2433, that leaves very little, um, <laughs> very little for that bullet to maintain a high level uh, of runout. Okay, so essentially, going into the freeboard, the freeboard itself is so tight that it sort of clamps down on the bullet wherever the runout is on the bullet and it sort of brings it into uh, better concentricity. And certainly um, that seems to be the case because when I, when I took a bunch of bullets and loaded them uh, without primers and without powder and chambered them and then pulled them out of the chamber, you can see a large scrape mark on the bullet where it, I believe it's scraping the free bore and the free bore from you know scraping it is bringing it into better concentric, uh, concentric alignment with the bore. Um, that scrape mark was very obvious. I mean, you could definitely see it. In fact, I measured it. I measured the length of it, and it just so happens that the length of the scrape is the same length of my free bore. So on my reamer, I have a seventy thousandths of an inch free bore. And when I measured the scrape marks using my caliper, how long they were, the scrape marks were just about 70 thousandths long. So that to me suggests that there's that these tight free bores are sort of keeping that bullet fairly concentric. So um, essentially, I think my conclusions based on this testing thus far are that uh, in rifles, you know, where you have a tight free bore. Um, and your bullet may not be very concentric. Maybe it's, you know, three, four, five, six thousandths off, whatever. Um, when it goes into that free bore, that tight free bore then sort of kind of centers it to a degree. Um, and it sh shoots the same as um, a very minimally, you know, minimal run out bullet. Um, certainly the data here is showing it's shooting the same, you know, minimal run out versus six thousandths run out is shooting the same. So. That's um, where I believe the explanation lies. And so I'm basically going to conclude that uh, tight free bores, well, run out probably doesn't matter in that situation. Um, does run out matter in 
very wide free bores where we wouldn't expect the bullet to somehow get recentered a little bit as it goes through the free bore and sits in the free bore. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's another test to be done. Um, hopefully, I'll have the means to do so. Um, but for now, um, that's kind of an open question mark. But um, anyway, it's worth taking a look at your free bore diameter and seeing do I have a tight free bore? Do I have a loose one? Um, this one is super tight. I mean, the amount of space between um, you know the barrel in the free bore and the bullet is 0 0.00015, which is very very tight. Um, so yeah, there's the conclusion. Whether you're into the lands or off lands, uh, if you have a tight free bore chamber, um, I suspect that uh, that is going to help sort of keep keep a high run out bullet fairly concentric to the bore and shoot the same as a low run out bullet. All right, and I want to thank some of the people that provided uh, good feedback to me about this uh, in the first video. I received a um, couple of emails from particular people overseas. I won't name any names. Um, and they sent, you know, data. They sent, um, uh, you know, uh, images of free bores and sort of how, you know, um, something like this could happen where it recenters. They also mentioned the scrape on the bullet. They said, take a look at that and see if you get a scrape that, you know, that's probably evidence that it's recentering, you know, recentering in the free bore. So I want to say thank you to those people. Um, and this is, that's the kind of feedback that I certainly appreciate when I'm doing these tests. I mean, oftentimes I will get uh, feedback that, um, you know, is non-contributory, not really relevant. Um, often in some cases, uh, counter to the actual data that, you know, I see in these tests and things like that. Um, not to say that that feedback is not valued, but, um, certainly constructive feedback that, um, helps to understand better, you know, what may be going on here and what may be contributory factors, um, is very much appreciated. So thank you for that. Anyway, okay, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I uh, hope you all have, you know, wonderful shooting season. Shoot small, and please visit my Patreon page. Uh, these tests do uh, cost quite a bit of money. Um, in fact, I'm having to re-barrel right now because the barrel that I've been shooting these tests with, my Brooks barrel number one, is going on, um, oh, almost going on 1,200 rounds, so it's time to retire this barrel. Um, I have noticed that it went from shooting very consistently in the low twos to consistently shooting uh, mid twos. And that's a sign to me that the barrel is, is starting to uh, age out. It's, it's starting to um, not be, uh, well, it's useful because the law of averages is going to help us figure out these kind of things anyway. But um, we would like to use, you know, um, newer barrels that don't have a whole lot of wear on them. And this one is wearing out. So um, any any kind of support you can provide uh, for this testing is very much appreciated. Um, all right. Take care.